the second Sunday of Easter at St. Luke Lutheran Church. Grace, mercy, and peace be to each of you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm Pastor Bert Thompson. Our hymn leader is Deaconess Carol. Just a reminder, if you have a prayer request, please call the church office and leave a message. We'll add your request to our prayers for the next Sunday. Our hymn is 470, O Sons and Daughters of the King, 470. This hymn tells the story of Easter and the Sunday after Easter. The word Alleluia means praise God. It's nine stanzas long. We'll sing, nine, we'll sing three stanzas before the service, three stanzas before the sermon, and three stanzas for our closing. Hymn 470, Sons and Daughters of the King, stanzas one, two, and three. <clears throat> Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all deeps. 
fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy will, wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his saints. For the people of Israel who are near to him, praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may, by your grace, confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God, through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The epistle lesson is from 1 Peter, the first chapter, beginning at the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now, for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the testing genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it's tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and re rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has clothed him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 20, beginning at the 19th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so, I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you withhold this forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was, was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands. Put out your hand, and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. 
Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. In 470 stanzas 4 through 6. Just like in our gospel lesson, God calls those who are fearful, those who suffer guilt and regret, those who doubt, and those without faith, the unbelievers. First, Christ creates this assembly for the fearful. On Easter Sunday, Jesus' disciples assemble, but they assemble out of fear. They gather together in one place. They locked the doors. The authorities had already killed Jesus, and his disciples rightly feel that they may be next. They need peace in the midst of a very real fear. So the risen Christ comes to them. He declares, peace be with you. You hear these same words of Jesus spoken during Holy Communion. Jesus is God. When he declares, be healed, people are healed. When he declares to dead Lazarus, come forth, Lazarus comes forth. When he declares, peace be with you, his disciples receive the peace of God which passes all understanding. God's peace forgives their fears. It enables them to fight anxiety. Yes, Christ creates this assembly for the fearful, so he can give us relief. Being joined to him in baptism and in his supper is solid assurance that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Christ also creates this assembly for the guilty. 
All the remaining 11 disciples feel guilty. Every one of them promised never to abandon Jesus in his hour of pain. Yet, they ran and hid while their friend suffered and died. When the going gets tough, we too are tempted to run and hide our faith and not talk about Jesus instead of living our faith in word and deed. Christ creates this assembly for the guilty so he can come to us in his word and suffer to forgive us and restore us. He did the same to Peter who, in fear, denied even knowing Jesus, his Savior and his friend. Christ gives Peter the same Holy Spirit he gives us to empower us to boldly live as God's people. Christ also creates this assembly for doubters. Scripture says, everything that does not come from faith is sin. Doubt is sin. Doubters are welcome here. Christ comes, calls all doubters to come, be forgiven, and receive confidence. At times, we all are doubters. We believe that Christ took all our sins to the cross and was punished in our place for all of them. Yet, if we perhaps commit a sin that shocks even us, a sin we could not believe that we would do, we might begin to doubt if we can truly be forgiven. We believe, but we doubt forgiveness at the same time. In Mark chapter 9, a father begs Jesus to heal his son, but he doubts Jesus' power. So he begs, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Every Christian who struggles with doubt cries out, help my unbelief. And Jesus helps us through his word. Christ creates this assembly for all us doubters who struggle with questions about our faith. Christ comes to us in his word and sacraments. He reassures us that we do not have to understand everything about him to know that he loves us. Christ also creates this assembly for the faithless and the disbelievers, including Thomas. We call him Doubting Thomas. Yes, Thomas was a doubter, but he was much more than that. Listen to his words. Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Unless I see, I will never believe. After the crucifixion, Thomas has no faith in Christ. None, nada, zero. He refuses to believe the word of the apostles who had seen the risen Christ. And at this point, he is an unbeliever. Does he believe there is a God? Yes. But he's lost faith in Christ. In losing faith in Christ, he has lost heaven. We tend to split people into three groups. Those who treasure God's word and love Christ. Those who ridicule God's word and hate Christ. And then those good people who know there is a God, but who do not follow Christ. Sadly, these in the third group are like Thomas. They do not trust Christ for their salvation. Without faith in Christ, they will not go to heaven. So Christ creates this assembly for them also. Christ wants all to turn to him and be saved. Jesus wants all unbelievers to come into his assembly. He loves them deeply, just like he loves unbelieving Thomas. Although Thomas does not believe in the risen Christ, he follows his friends to where the faithful assemble. On Sunday, in this assembly of believers, Jesus comes and speaks to Thomas, and Thomas believes. History tells us that Thomas became one of the greatest missionaries to India. Thomas dies a martyr, trusting in the risen Christ. Jesus uses Thomas as an example for us. Thomas would not believe the words of the apostles. He had to see. 
we also have the words of the apostles written down for us in Holy Scripture. The Holy Spirit opens our ears to hear the word of the Lord and believe it. Jesus blesses us. He says, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. That's us. Yes, Christ creates this assembly for the fearful, for those who feel guilty, for those who doubt, and for those who are without faith, the unbelievers. In other words, Christ creates this assembly for all sinners, just like you and me. But that's not all. In this assembly in which he creates, Christ gives his disciples power. Power to forgive sins, because sin keeps us out of heaven. Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Through the words of Christ, spoken by our pastor, Christ comes to us, forgives us our sins, and unites us with him. When, in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, your pastor forgives all your sins, all your sins are forgiven. Your sins are gone. Conversely, for those who love their sins, your pastor must withhold forgiveness until they hate their sins and want to be forgiven. And when they repent, what a glorious day that will be. Jesus says there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Joy. Christ creates this assembly for you and for me and for all people. Here, your pastor speaks Jesus' words to you in word and sacrament. And you receive forgiveness for all your sins. This assembly, even if for now we can only assemble on Facebook and YouTube, this assembly is God's forever family. You belong here. For now, we are scattered to our homes, but this too will end. We will look forward to gathering together once again in God's house. And in heaven, we will never be separated again. Thanks be to God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our common faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy, keep us from the doubts and fears that cripple us. Teach us to trust your word and to trust Jesus Christ, crucified for our sins and raised for our justification. Give us boldness and courage to speak your name without fear. Sustain us during this quarantine. Soon, we pray, bring your scattered church together again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of power, give courage and strength to those persecuted for the faith and comfort the families of the martyrs. Keep your church steadfast in the doctrine of the apostles and the faith once delivered to the saints. Help us admonish those who have fallen away and restore with gentleness 
those who have wandered from the truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of might, counsel the nations and their leaders to act wisely in all matters. Teach us to love one another as you have loved us. Deliver us from disease and everything that threatens our homes and families. Protect police, firefighters, disaster relief workers, and medical personnel, as well as the places where we live and work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. God of comfort, give your aid and relief to all who suffer in any need. We pray for Ron Sr., Craig, Dylan, Mary Ellen, Chris, John and Ethel, Pastor Hines and Ellen, Carol, Chuck, Michael, Jim, Mildred, Mary, Eugene and Marge, Letty, Pat, Peggy, Hazel, Al, Shirley, Jim and Doris, Hazel, Pat, Doris, Sally, Bill and Eunice, Christine, Ed, Ron and Janice, Carl and Betty, and those we name in our hearts. Be with those who grieve the loss of a loved one. Point them to the promise of the resurrection to all who die in faith in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O blessed God and Lord, help us to endure the troubles of this life and faith, and with joy receive the blessings of your grace and the answers to our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We sing the final verses of 4-7.